the Green Hornet. He hunts the biggest of all game, public enemies who try to destroy our America. Faithful valet Cato, Britt Reed, daring young publisher, matches wits with racketeers and saboteurs, risking his life that criminals and racketeers will feel the weight of the law by the sting of the Green Hornet. Ride with Britt Reed in the thrilling adventure, Cats with Nine Lives. The Green Hornet strikes again. attended the big game of the year and took Michael Axford with him. Run, you spotty! Leg it! That's the stuff! He's in the clear! He's going to make it! He's got the goal! He's made it! He's made it! He's made it! The game is over! That's the word! Come on, Axford! Let's get out ahead of the ball! Sugar and snakes. You never saw so many cars in one parking lot. <laughs> well, it's some parking lot, Axford. Hey, Fred! Why not a Fred? Because there's one Forrester. Larry, Len! God, what a it came. Sure was. Well, how have you been, Lenny? I haven't seen you since your father died. Oh, I've been all right, Brick. Hey, we should get together once in a while. Oh, pardon me, Lenny. This is Mike Axford. Axford, Lenny Forrester is the fraternity brother. Glad to know you, Mr. Axford. Sure, as glad I am to make your acquaintance. <laughs> You've heard about Forrester, Axford. The son of Iron Jim. Oh, so you're the lad that came in all that money a couple of years ago. That's right. Pardon me. I'm sorry to cross you. It's all right. Uh, Say, Grid, I'm blocking the traffic here. Uh, are you going to the grill tonight? No, uh, I can't make it, Lenny. Oh, I wish you could. All the old gang will be there. Well, I'd like to, but I've got a job to take care of. Drop him at the office when you get a chance. We'll rehash old times. Or phone and we'll have lunch together. I'll do that. Hey, Lenny. You coming? Be right with you. Uh-uh. Pardon if I seem to crowd. Why don't you shove on? All right. I'll drop in, Brett. I'll be looking for you. In a day or so. Our car's over here, actually. Hey, he's a nice-looking young fellow. Oh, uh, swell guy. Yeah, why ain't you going to that grill or whatever it is? It'll be too much of a party. I don't feel quite up to it. Hey, that guy's a call to him. You see him? Yes. What about him? He ain't one of your frat brothers, is he? No. Well, I didn't think so. That guy's no good. Do you know him? Yeah, his name is Minton. Shady Minton, we used to know him as. Oh, Shady Minton, eh? My golly, that lug has been investigated by the cops more times than he can shake a stick at. He's been in a lot of confidence games and things. Well, strange company for Lenny Forrester. Yeah. I wonder where he picked up with a guy like that. <laughs> Axford Lenny is probably wondering the same thing about you. Oh, is that so now? Well, Reed, I'll tell you this much. If Lenny goes to that blowout tonight and has Minton along with him, he better watch his step. If he gets too much to drink, Minton will take the gold out of his cheek. Hey, Minton, how's your playmate? So it's also high ball, they stuff in it, what else? It'll hit him any minute now. Good. I'll be waiting near the door. I'll pick you up on the way out. I better get over to Forrester. Looks as if he's about to pass on. You see him more on the end there? What's the matter, Lenny? I don't know, Mitten. I see a light head in there, the drink you had. Just wondering. Well, maybe it's a smoke. Might be. Well, it's every smoky tonight. I I better get out for sure. It's a good idea. Come on, I'll take you out. You need to leave. Oh, I've had enough of this place anyhow. Here, I'll leave this to cover our check. Come on, Lenny. Is he? Let me help you. I guess I need it. This way. You lean on me. Hi, Lenny. One too many? No, I don't pay any attention to him. I don't like this. Here's the check room. Give me a hat check, hmm? Here. Uh, somewhere. Uh, hold on, Mitten. 
Oh, what's happened to your friend? Oh, hello, Waddle. Stick with me. I may need some help. Check. Hat check. Uh, here, baby. Get Mr. Forrester's hat and coat. Didn't take him long. Lay off the crack, sister. Mr. Forrester don't like him. Hat. Cool. Uh, here you are, sir. Shall I help him with them? Don't bother. You carry the hat and coat, Waddle. Yeah, sure thing. This way, Lenny. Right outside. You feel better when the air hits you. Mr. Forrest, this car. Steady now. They're bringing your car around. Hello, baby. Did you live? Carl Bradford. Hello. <laughs> I'm taking my friend Len Forrester home. He's ill. Oh, what a shame. Well, Len, uh, this Carl Bradford, the attorney. Good friend of mine. How do you do? Oh. Here's your car, sir. Thank you. Here you are. Thank you. Len's hardly in condition to drive a car, but he insists on it. Rather risky driving that condition. You know how the law is about looking drivers. Oh, yeah. Well, here's the car, Len. See you later, Bradford. Yes, yes. I don't feel... You'll be all right, Len. Driving will clear your head. There now. In you go. Come on, Waddle. Right. Wouldn't you? Driver. Easy. You'll be better for driving. Go ahead now. Just about out. You got the wheel shoe. Everything's just swell. Here, I'll pull over the curb and stop. Yeah, he's out cold now. I'll drive. Great. Everyone saw him take the wheel and left the grill. It's working slick. Including Carl Bradford, the attorney. Oh, what could be sweeter? <laughs> Did you know he'd be on hand? No, that was just a lucky break. Uh, slide him over here and take the wheel. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Over here, come, come on. There. I got it. There now. Tumbler will be on hand, won't he? Right. Can't send his orders. So has guy. Okay. And there's sure to be witnesses on that corner. <laughs> Look at that car coming. Zigzagging from one side to the other. Another one of those college guys. Yeah, they ought to be jailed. Look out, he's going to turn. <laughs> What I do, Don? Great. Now, we'll get you out of here and make you look seriously injured. Just remember to insist that I take care of you. On Monday, Michael Axford perched on the edge of Miss Case's desk while he tried to tell Britt Reed's preoccupied secretary about the football game. The guy just about to get knocked for a goal by a couple of red-shirted guys, and then he fools him. He throws that pigskin... Katie... Are you following me? Hit and run. Hit and run, me eye. I'm trying to tell you about football. That's baseball. It's murder in some cases. Michael, do you want to do me a million dollar favor with trimmings on it? Huh? Sit down and be quiet for a few minutes. Well, now, that's I'm a fine. I'm trying to whip up an editorial for Mr. Reed. Did you see this morning's story in the Sentinel? What about? Hit and run drivers. The Sentinel's starting a campaign for stiffer penalties when they're caught. Say, do you have any ideas? By golly, there's something they should get what they are. What was that? Stiffer penalties when they're caught. <laughs> That's what them hit-and-run guys should get. Uh, what are you writing? Well, Gunnigan had an editorial in the last edition. Mr. Reed wants a stronger one of the next. Hmm, what's that got to do with you? Well, Mr. Reed told Gunnigan he'd show him exactly what he meant. Good for Reed. That's the stuff. Yes, but then he turned and he said to me, write it. <laughs> and he went to luncheon at the Civic Club. That was three hours ago. And he ain't back yet? No. Uh, did he have a date to meet someone there? Yes, a fraternity brother of his, Len Forrester, phoned and made an appointment. Oh, golly, that's it. Well, that's what? That's the day shot. Them two are old pals. If Reed was to meet Forrester for lunch, the chances are it'll wind up at dinner time. I could just see the two of them sitting in that swell dining room. I saw that article in your paper, Hit and Run. I thought I'd call you for some unbiased advice. When did you hit this man, Lenny? Last Saturday night, on the way home from the grill. 
And you didn't even stop the car? Oh, I don't know. I, I don't remember anything at all. All I know is what I was told. Well, what did you learn about it? Last evening. You see, there happened to be a doctor who saw the accident. He got my license number. He treated this man and then took him home. He called me last night. The doctor did? Yes, uh, Dr. Hill. Now, here's his card. Oh. I called Minton right away, and he confirmed what the doctor had said. Minton said that a man named Waddles had been in the car with us. Have you talked to an attorney? Yes, Minton called a lawyer named Bradford. We've seen him at the grill. Uh, do you know Carl Bradford? I know who he is. He's a good counsel. Well, we went to call on Katz, and that's the man I struck. He's in terrible shape, probably crippled for life. And you didn't report the accident at all? Uh, no. Uh, hit and run, driving while drunk. Oh, Brett, I... Another thing, Len. Your record in traffic court's none too good. Don't I know it? I've got a string of speeding convictions as long as your arm. If this ever goes into court, I'll get a jail sentence. Well, then... Anyway. Brett, I swear I wasn't drunk. I... I don't remember a thing that happened, but I had taken just one highball. Did you report it to the insurance company? Good Lord, no, I can't. That would mean that the police would know. What did Bradford advise you to do? Report it to the police and take the rap. I, but I can't. I know I'm not guilty. Guilty or not, there's a strong case against you. Witnesses and all. I know it. Did Dr. Hill take Cass to a hospital? He said that Katz insisted on going home, so he took him there. Now, where does Katz live? In a cottage at 310 Elm Street. Was he conscious? Oh, yes, I talked to him. He, well, he said he was willing to keep things quiet if I paid for the injuries. So you paid? $10,000. Let me. Oh, what else could I do? Now, Britt, do you think that'll be the end of it? Well, I'm afraid, Lenny, you'll have to ask Katz. Well, now I get back to my office. Must you go? Yes. I've got to write an editorial. You? Yes. We're conducting a campaign, you see. Trying to get the courts to hand out stiffer jolts to hit-run drivers. Uh, here's Reed now. Oh, uh, Mr. Reed, I have that editorial ready. The one you wrote. Send it to Gunninger, will you, Miss Case? I'm going to spend the rest of the afternoon getting acquainted with the morgue. Where'd the cadavers are? No, expert. The morgue of the Daily Sentinel. That evening, Cato, the trusted Filipino valet, came into Britt Reed's bedroom. Well, Mr. Britt, you said to let you know unless Mr. Axford went out. Has he gone to police headquarters again, Cato? Well, yes, sir. Kato, I learned quite a bit when I dug into the old files at the office. Oh, yes? Metton has a pretty bad record. Dr. Hills is worse. It is? If the medical association could prove charges of fee splitting and quackery against him, he'd be out of the association. There seems to me to be too much coincidence about Len Forrester's trouble. Coincidence? Dr. Hill on hand when the accident occurred. Len going stiff on one drink. Metton just happening to meet Wattles. What are you going to do, Mr. Britt? I'm going to call on this injured man named Katz. I have a few ideas of my own. Let's break from the Green Hornet. More after this. Now let's get back to the Green Hornet. Now back to our story. Brett Reed's investigation of the individuals involved led him to suspect that his friend Len Forrester was the victim of a carefully planned blackmail scheme. With Cato, the young publisher sat in his bedroom, laying the groundwork for the evening's activity. Put fresh charges in that gas weapon, Cato. I'm doing so, Mr. Britt. And get out the rest of the stuff I'll need. There's a list there on the desk. Very well. I'm going to confirm one suspicion by phone. Hello? Hello, Doc Hill. Yes? Have you heard from Mitten today? Who's calling? Skip that. Just answer the question. I haven't heard from him. You'd better be at Kansas Place at night tonight. Why? I don't know what Mitten has in mind. Just be there, that's all. Suspicion confirmed, Cato. He knows Mitten pretty well. You think he will be at Cat's place? I'm going to count on it. That stuff ready? Weapon, mask, and other things are ready. Come on, then. 
It's time for the Green Hornet to move. Stepping through a secret panel in the rear of a closet in his bedroom, Red Reed and Cato went along a narrow passageway built within the walls of the apartment itself. This led to an adjoining building which fronted on a dark side street. Though supposedly abandoned, this building served as the hiding place for the sleek, super-powered Black Beauty, streamlined car of the Green Hornet. Cato, I, I just had another idea. It is funny to you, Mr. Green? You said Axford was at headquarters. Oh, yes, sir. I'll take a page one-story tool in person. We'll need the convertible as well as the Black Beauty. The two cars? You take the convertible, park a little away from the front of Katz's house, and when you see the lights blink, start the car and drive into the side entrance. Is that clear? Well, yes, sir. We'll get going. Britt Reed pressed a button. The great car roared into life. A section of the wall in front raised automatically, then closed as the gleaming black beauty sped into the darkness. nothing from him. How do you feel, Tumbler? Punk. Look at me. I got some real bruises when I jumped in front of that guy's car. I ought to get a bigger cut. Ain't many guys can take a fall like I can. You'll have cash to spend long after the bruises are forgotten. How long I got to stay in the house and play like I'm crippled? You see how a young Forrester takes it. Minton is going to try to shake him down for another 10000 I... Uh... <laughs> Hello, Doc. You... That mask! It's the Green Hornet! How'd you get in here? Pick the lock on the back door. You should be in bed, shouldn't you, Mitten? What? What are you doing here? Doc and I have business to talk over. Heard from Mitten yet, Doc? No. What's the idea of you busting Take in it here? Easy. I'm showing the boys how to get into the big dough. Big dough? Sure. Hattie can get about a hundred grand out of Forrest. Uh, who's Hattie? Your widow. What? You see, Doc, the fellow Forrester struck died from the injury. Now, wait. Wait a minute. Shut up, you... Pets. You've got nothing to say about it. But I... You... You'll have to go to work on this guy so it'll look convincing when the police medical examiner goes over him. The, the police medical examiner? Hey, I ain't gonna go Are to... Are you going to shut up or must I shut you up? You... You mean he's really to die? Of course he has to die. We've got to have a corpse to show Forrest. Like fun. That's... Now, hold on. I didn't agree to get mixed up in murder. You're mixed up in it now, Doc, and there's only one way out. Well, you can't do this. It's murder. It, it's I'll murder. I'll sleep with this gas weapon. You won't feel anything. No, no, stop. Stop. I won't stand for this. He got me. I... Doc, you better have some, too. No, no. Yes, yes, Dr. Hill. That's just the beginning, you rats. The Green Hornet quickly cut the phone wire, then drew out a case containing a charged hypodermic needle. He shot a colorless fluid into the arm of Tumbler Katz to counteract the effect of the gas. And that'll bring him around in a couple of minutes. Red Reed switched the lights off and on to signal Cato, who watched from a short distance away. Cato then drove the convertible to the side door of the house. Red was there waiting. He quickly changed to a different hat and coat. He gave Cato the mask of the Green Hornet. The Black Beauty's over there in the alley. Go and stay with it, Cato, until I return. Yes, sir. In the meantime, Tumbler Katz recovered consciousness. He remembered the Green Hornet's plan to kill him. Then he saw the doctor sprawled on the floor. Wide-eyed with fear, he leaped to his feet and rushed to the door. There was a convertible coupe in the driveway. A well-dressed man was walking toward him. Hello there. I'm looking for a man named Katz. Well, I, I can't talk now. I've got to hurry. Hold on. You're all bandaged up. Let go my arm. Is your name Katz? What of it? Let me go. I thought you were badly hurt. Oh, please let me go. I don't want to die. I expected to find you all up here or death than this. No. My friend Forrester said you were badly hurt. I came to talk to you. Oh, tell him it's the bunk. i got to get to the cops. Let me go before the Hornet comes back. The Hornet? He's going to kill me, I tell you. i got to get the cops. Great Scott, get under my car. What? I'll take you to police headquarters in record time. Here's police headquarters, Katz. That's Sergeant Burke at the desk. The man with him is from my newspaper. Sergeant Snakes, it's Britt Reed. Who's the guy with all the bandages? I swear to brought a story to you. you you've got to help me. You've got to save me. Reed, who's this? His name is Katz, Tumbler Katz. It's a long story, Axford. You see, my friend Forrester got into something of a jam. 
I was going to call on this man, Katz, when he rushed from the house. It's the horn. That's suffering snakes, the hand. He's got in with Mitten and one of those. He's going to kill me. What's that about Mitten? You can get the facts, actually. I'm going over to Forrester's house. The horn is around somewhere. I got conscious and seen the dock on the floor, and I ran out. I'll hold everything. Let's get these facts straight. Reed, stick around. This might be good. Len Forrester will be waiting for me, actually. Phone me there if you've got anything sensational. Fritz strolled out of the police headquarters, but once in the street, he moved fast. In his convertible, he hurried to the nearest drugstore and dialed the number of Mitten's home. Mitten, get this the first time and get it straight. I can't repeat. Doc wants you to know that the Green Hornets tried to muscle in. Katz got scared and ran to the cops. He's filming the works about you. Get ready to land. A short while later, Britt brought the convertible to a stop a few yards from where he'd parked the Black Beauty in a dark alley. Mr. Britt, is everything all right? It is so far, but time's precious. Take this coat and Yes, sir. The other outfit. The outfit I wear with a mask. Right here. I hold coat for you. Kiddo, here are the plans for the rest of the night. We're going from here to Mitten's house. Listen. Still no answer, Doc's house? No. No answer. What do you make of it, Mitten? What else? I don't know what to make of it. No idea who it was that phoned with a warning about the Green Hornet? Wasn't a voice I'd ever heard before. Would you know it if you heard it again? No, I don't think so. I don't like the way things stack up. Try cats again. Maybe Doc's over there. There's no use, but I'll try it. Told you it was out of order the last time, didn't I? Yeah. Same as before, University 3628. I'm sorry, sir, that line is out of order. Uh, nuts. You know what, Waddles? I'm taking no chances. We'll be ready to scram if the cops show up. I think that'd be smart. Smarter and answer a lot of questions if Tumblr Katz tells all he knows. Here, hold this briefcase. Got everything ready to move fast? Goes right here in the desk, ten grand. Good thing we hadn't split with Doc and Cat. Yeah, now give me the bag. I'll put the cash in just in case. Yeah. Now, the first line of the cops, we clear out. Hey, car stopped out front. Let me see. It's a scout car. Uh-oh, that's our cue to move. Come on. Sure we can get out the back way? Maybe they've got that watch. No, nah, they won't have. This way, Bottles. Cops at the door. By the time they get in, we'll be gone. The car's in the garage at the corner. We'll take it and scoop. Here's the door. Going somewhere? The Hornet, the Green Hornet. I'll take that briefcase and exchange all your... No, no, don't kill us. Fool, the cops are out front. Help! Oh, the Hornet! Take it, you fathead. I'm just staying away from the cops. I've got places to no, go. don't shoot me. Just gas to put you asleep. No. <laughs> Wake up in the arms of the law. So long, brats. Hey, look what's here on the ground. Hey, that's Minton. He's out cold. It's the work of the harness. That green harness must be around here. We gotta find him. Spread out and search the place. While Axford and the police milled around the house, Britt Reed stood next to the Black Beauty in a dark alley nearby. He handed Cato the mask for the second time that evening. Get into the Black Beauty, Cato. Open her wide and let the police and extra know the Green Hornet's car is on the run. Britt walked down the alley to his convertible. Then he heard the well-known sound of the Black Beauty. There he goes! The Green Hornet! Get that car! Get after him! Britt smiled in the darkness as the police took after Cato. He knew that the Black Beauty was already out of reach. He waited until the last of the police cars had left. Then he stepped into his convertible. Britt was no longer the Green Hornet. He was just Britt Reed, driving to call on his friend, Len Forrester. to come home. Have I got news? I told you it would be Len Forrester's accident. Did you call there? Yeah, but you'd already left. Did that phony accident the victim squeal? Did he squeal? Oh, golly. He spilled everything about a game his gang was working on your friend Forrester. I told you that guy Minton was no good. Yes, you told me. We got the crooked doctor and Minton and the guy with Minton. 
Then Forster told me he paid those crooks $10,000. Did you recover that? Reed, I was that close to getting it. Only the hornet got there first. Milton said he had the door in a briefcase and the green hornet got away with it. Well, Forrester deserves to lose it. He's a pretty reckless driver. Perhaps this will be a lesson to him. Yeah. If only someone worthwhile got the door instead of that green hornet. Well, tell me the details in the morning, Axford. I'm tired. Uh, I guess I'll turn. Oh, uh, go ahead. Cato's in there. Turn your bed down. Uh, good night, Axford. Uh, good night, dear. The bed is ready, Mr. Britt. Oh, uh, Cato, where's the 10,000? In Black Beauty. In the morning, we must see to it. It goes to that home for crippled children. Uh, open the window, will you, Cato? Oh, yes, Mr. Britt. That's my lullaby. Well, good night, Kiko. Oh. Oh.